This week's episode of Trek Geeks is brought to you by Fansets, the place for amazing pin collectibles. They have over 150 officially licensed Star Trek pins to choose from, with new pins coming out every month. See all the pins and collectibles they have to offer at fansets.com, and stay tuned for this week's special discount code from Trek Geeks and Discovering Trek. Fansets, we are Star Trek. This week's episode of Trek Geeks is also brought to you by Eagle Moss and the official Star Trek Starships collection. You can bring home the Enterprise D from Star Trek The Next Generation for only $4.95 when you sign up today at st-starships.com slash trekgeeks. This is Robert O'Reilly, Chancellor Garon, on Star Trek The Next Generation and Deep Space Nine. And you are listening to the biggest little podcast this side of the Alpha Quadrant. It's the Trek Geeks Podcast with Dan Davidson and Bill Smith. Glory to you and your house. Our transport from Podfleet Command has just gotten in, and boy, are our arms tired. What a long flight that was. Here we are. Normally, I would say this is the biggest little show this side of the Alpha Quadrant, but we're going to talk a little bit about that later. Regardless, welcome back to Trek Geeks. We are back from our, our little holiday break. We're refreshed. We're, we're excited to be here, and we're going to catch up on a lot of stuff tonight. Of course, by we, I do mean my illustrious co-host. He doesn't know it yet, but I'm going to start my insult-free Friday early, because we're <laughs> recording this on a Thursday, and say, buddy, welcome back to Trek Geeks, mon frere, Dan well, Davidson. See, I was going to enter with, you know, you don't use your arms when you use the transporter, dummy, but because you're going to be insult-free, I'm going to be insult-free, so I'm not going to say that. It's great to be here, man. Thanks. <laughs> and for the record, I said transport and not transporter. Oh, well, it's Star Trek, so I was thinking transporter, so my bad. See, I can take it. <laughs> yeah, you can, you're doing a great job today already. I mean, <laughs> thank you. Sh shaking off the rust. It's kind of like the preseason. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Grapefruit absolutely. league, if you will. Mm hmm. Yeah. Throw, but, throw uh, me up some softballs, buddy. <laughs> but here we are tonight, buddy. Episode number 166. We have a lot to talk about. A lot happened while we were away. And oh, yeah. we have a whole bunch of announcements regarding Trek Geeks and the future of of us, and which are we are so excited to share with everybody. So um, before we do that, why don't you tell the good folks playing the home game how they can send us their uh, their comments, questions, suggestions, and otherwise recipes for moonshine? I like it. Uh, it is very easy to get in touch with us. Just head right on over to trekgeeks.com slash contact, and there you will find a variety or a plethora of ways to get in touch with either Bill or myself. You can leave us a voicemail. You can Skype chat us. You can fill out the contact form and type us out a personalized message, or you can just click on that big blue button on the right side of the website and leave us a very nice message using your own mellifluous tones using SpeakPipe. And hey, don't forget the, the place to be on Facebook these days is the official Facebook group, Camp Kittimer. Bring your Trek talk, your Trek picks, and your Trek love over to the site and join now over 1,300 other friends to talk all things Star Trek. And yes, we will be bringing back the Friday Commute Celebration very soon, hopefully. We've been taking a little bit of break uh, from that for the holidays, but they'll, it'll be back. Don't you worry. Uh, Bill and I do that every week, uh, our, our weekly lip sync, especially for our campers. And to join the group, just head right on over to facebook.com slash groups slash camp Kittimer and be ready to take part in all the fun and as always we do want to thank our wonderful admins heather jackie and dan for the amazing job that they do running that camp but 
Please remember that any comments or messages that you leave us in any of these places may be used in a future episode. Bill, I'm going to turn it back to you. Thank you, Dan. That's fantastic. What's so good to be back here broadcasting with you? Because we're not really broadcasting. I guess we're recording. Uh, huh? Yeah, uh, right. I guess I've got some rust to shake off here in Grapefruit League, too. <laughs> Dan, it's time for the news from treknews.net. Well, wait a minute. Isn't the whole episode news? Will you just do the damn song? <laughs> Spanning the Alpha Quadrant. <laughs> for all the news on all the Star Treks, yo. <laughs> it's treknews.net. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I laugh every time you do that because I know it's coming. <laughs> it's funny. It's it is it is funny. Uh, online at treknews.net. I almost forgot the kicker there. Sorry, no, uh, okay. Dan. So much to talk about. Um, one of the things that came up while we were gone, which we were both floored by, is the announcement of a brand new, or another brand new. It's it's really weird to say that Star Trek series. Um, Starring the legendary and iconic Michelle Yeoh. And guess what? It's going to be focused on one of your favorite aspects of Star Trek. You know, we speculated that this could possibly be something back in the day uh, when that little snippet came out uh, at the end of season one where Michelle Yeoh's character, Captain Georgiou, was, or Mira Georgiou, I should say, Emperor, Empress. Giorgio was uh, uh, approached by a member of Section 31. And then we heard rumors that they might be in negotiations talking about a Section 31 show. And, and oh boy, oh boy, everybody who listens to the show knows how I feel about Section 31. Well, as we were on our uh, Christmas break, that became fact, people. Yes, there is going to be a Section 31 series starring Michelle Yeoh as Philippa Giorgio. From the Mirror Universe, Section 31. I don't even know where to begin. I am excited. You are excited. All you listeners should be excited. It's going to happen. I'm loving it. Back to you. <laughs> all, all the excites is what we has. <laughs> oh he has all the excites. Um, so think about this. We are now living in a time where we have one Star Trek series currently in active production making episodes. We have a second Star Trek series, the heretofore unnamed Picard series, which is in pre-production. And then we have a now, or sorry, we have also another series, an animated one, Lower Decks, also in pre-production. We have announced a brand new live action series um, for Section 31. And then they announced another animated series at some point but didn't give any details so really there are five star trek shows on the board we haven't had anything like this since like 1994 when next gen was wrapping deep space nine was on voyager was in pre-production and generations was being produced mm. on the paramount lot all at once it, it, it's it's unbelievable um I, I, there's so much excitement so there's so many things to be excited with in the Star Trek universe right now. And I know that some people have been asking, oh, is, is, is this too much Star Trek? Are we going to get burnt out again? Because people say that that's what happened with Enterprise and why Enterprise um, um, lasted only four seasons. I don't I don't agree with that. I think that the popularity of Star Trek has continued to grow um, in in the past decade, especially. And I'm very excited about this. One of the things, Bill, that I'm most excited about about this Section 31 series, other than the fact that it's Section 31 and that's just going to be awesome, are the <laughs> showrunners. I am so excited that Erica Lippolt and Bowie Kim are going to be taking care of this show because we know what they do with Discovery. And I am ecstatic about this. When we heard this news, the first thing you and I both thought of was Bowie and Erica. Yeah. Um, and we were so excited for them because this is uh, this is landmark. I mean, we have we have a series being run by two amazing women who also have written some of the best of, of Discovery season one. 
including what we think is the best of the short treks. Absolutely. Helming a series that stars an international icon and legend in Michelle Yeoh. Um, I, 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 you know, people want to talk about, you know, diversity and, and how Star Trek, you know, helps pave the way in, in many ways, just add this to the list. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, it's, it's fantastic. And, and there's already been, you know, I, I won't say that it's, it's, I'll admit that the conversations can be had, but the whole idea of Section 31, and it's dark, and it's not Gene's vision, which I really am sick of hearing and saying, yep, yep. but I think it's great that there's a Section 31 everywhere. There's a Section 31 today. There's a Section 31 in the Romulan Empire and the Cardassians, and probably the Vulcans even have something like – there's always one of these organizations somewhere. So I think it's going to be great that this aspect of the Star Trek universe is going to be built upon with what we saw with the legendary William Sadler being the first person in Section 31 on Deep Space Nine and seeing that grow in the episodes that Section 31 was seen in. And then we saw a little bit in Enterprise and then a little bit here in Discovery. I think it's fantastic. And the show the showrunners have already said that it is going to live up to what Star Trek is all about. So I think that they have proven already that they mean what they say. They have answered questions that they said needed to be answered during Discovery Season 1. I, I, I am so ecstatic for this to be happening, and I have complete faith in that team that they're going to give us something that we're going to love. The one aspect I've heard people talk about um, repeatedly on social media, what a shock, um, <laughs> is the fact that they seem to have taken a character who – amounts to the equivalent of space Hitler and is given her that character, her own series and what that does to the optimism of Star Trek. Um, I, I understand that criticism and while I don't share it, I mean, I, I think that I have to think the key to this series is finding that gray area between the two where Giorgio has to learn to conform to what, uh, well, you know, is the prime universe is, and she can't just go by any means necessary. She still has to operate a certain way on this side of the mirror. That, that's just the way I feel. Uh, have you given any thoughts to that? Yeah, I think it's going to give us. So here's here's what I'd like. I'd like to take a, take a step back. Yeah, people are already crucifying the show without knowing one line of dialogue, one sentence of storytelling. Now people could say I'm doing the same thing by saying it's going to be great, but mm -hmm. I like to take that optimistic view that everybody says people who love Star Trek should do. I think that people who want to bash it before anything even happens, uh, I really kind of feel sad for because there's no reason to feel sad for a new Star Trek series coming when we don't know the, the big details about it. All right. the things that we've talked about so far, who it's starring, who's running it, what the idea is, is all a reason to be very excited and I hope it's infectious because I'm going to be going crazy waiting for information, news, <laughs> videos, trailers, all that stuff. Cause it's going to be great. I want to be on the show, Bill. <laughs> I want to be on section 31. I'll get right on that. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. I'll, I'll see what I can do. Um, speaking of other series, I mean, we mentioned that there are five shows presently either in production or in development. Um, there's the heretofore unnamed Picard series, as I keep mm -hmm. referring to it, which even Alex Kurtzman admits, yeah, it doesn't have a name yet, <laughs> um, which is kind of weird. It is a little um, weird. But there were some updates with regard to that, too. There were. Now, uh, we will never forget when uh, Sir Patrick Stewart came on stage at STLV last year to announce this. It, it was one of the most electric moments we have ever experienced at a convention. It was great. We haven't heard a lot about it until recently. We have finally started hearing some information about when it's going to take place, I think is one of the things that I am most interested about. It is actually going to take place post-destruction of Romulus, which is about 12 years after it's going to take place about 12 years after the Star Trek 2009 movie. But didn't Romulus get destroyed in the Kelvin timeline built? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have seen that so much. It's oh. like, well, no, we no. got explained no. in the Kelvin timeline, but the destruction yes. of Romulus happened in the prime timeline. Yes. Whether it's Nero explaining it to Chris Pike 
in Star Trek 2009 or whether you got the, uh, the countdown comics. Awesome. Um, that preceded Star Trek 2009, which were, I believe, co-written by Kurtzman and, and Roberto Orsi. Um, there was four issue set that explained why Spock went back or, or why Spock was involved in the first place. Mm-hmm. Uh, a fantastic comic set. And uh, I think it's a great story. You know, the, the, the Hobus star going Nova and destroying Romulus. And, um, but yeah, that happened in the prime timeline. Yes. In, when we see Picard, there's no more Romulus. Yeah. The, the, the empire has been dissolved. Um, Literally. And it, <laughs> it's you know, <laughs> very nice. And it's actually taken from, from what the snippets of interviews that we've seen where they've talked about it, it's taken a great toll on Picard. So it'll be interesting to see what this yeah. character is like when the series opens up. There's been all kinds of speculation. Is he going to be an admiral? Is he going to be an ambassador? Is he going to be at Starfleet Academy? It, but it's going to be different than what we're expecting or what we would expect with Picard, the character. And I think it's going to be a, another great chapter, of course. And Patrick Stewart's just going to blow it out of the park. I'm certain. Well, that's it. I mean, it's Sir Patrick Stewart. I mean, he's amazing and incredible in literally everything. Mm-hmm. He is such a wonderful actor. And you know that he's involved with the story they're crafting and creating for this series because we've seen him in photos in the writer's room. Right. So, you know, they brought to him this treatment. You know, if you, we posted the audio from uh, an interview with uh, Alex, or sorry, the video of an interview with Alex Kurtzman on our YouTube channel, which was taken by our friend Sean O'Halloran at, uh, at CES in Las Vegas uh, just a couple of weeks ago. And Kurtzman talks about that whole process of, of getting the Picard series going. And, you know, they were supposed to send Patrick Stewart a short treatment. They wound up sending him like 13 pages of what the story was going to be. I mean, usually <laughs> it's like a page and a half, two pages. Yeah. But, you know, it, it it took that long to explain what the series is and what they intended to do. And Patrick read it and signed on, which tells me that he's got to believe in the concept. So that means I have to believe that it's worth watching. I don't think he'd have any interest in doing it if it wasn't really something that was good. I actually read that it was a 30 30- Four page document. I may have been confusing that, but no, it was no, not you're probably right. Yeah. You're probably yeah. right. I think that I forgot the number and I just picked 13 out of the air. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's, uh, well, that's, that's good. Math is hard, but uh, yeah, yeah it, it, it's, it, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be great. And, and, you know, I got to admit, and people might be, might be mad at me for saying this. I'm not sure which one I'm more excited for right now. Well, actually I do know, but I just don't want to sound mean. Um, I, I, this is, this is gigantic, man. I mean, this is, huge news two shows with two international superstars in our star trek universe is coming how can you not be excited about that how can people take the negative tones and bashing that's going on with this kind of unbelievable news it boggles my mind every single day that i read it but 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 alex kurtzman's gonna destroy star trek but i don't trust alex kurtzman but uh, alex kurtzman's evil and and well, he's he's just trying to make it more like JJ Trek and 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 New Trek, and um, hmm. it, it's all a it's all a plot because they can't use uh, they legally can't use anything from the original series, all of which is just a load of horse crap. Didn't they say the same thing about Rick Berman? Hmm. You, you know that's the thing is people conveniently forget the problems that people used to have with Rick Berman, especially during Voyager and Enterprise, Mm -hmm. where he was not a well-liked guy by any means by fans. And people would complain about him and Brandon Braga all day long. And now it's like none of that ever happened. What I learned from all that is let's just watch and decide afterwards. Let's find out what the thing is and then judge it by its own merits. Um, That's... That's all I can do as a fan because I want more Star Trek. Hear, hear. You know, Bill, as we celebrate our fourth anniversary of Trek Geeks, we are just so happy and honored to have Fansets as an official sponsor of the show. Uh, We have been so impressed with the product that Fansets has been putting out since we first met them at STLV a few years back, and their pins have only improved since that time. And uh, you know what, man? You and I have been lucky enough to see what Fansets has been conjuring up 
uh, for what's going to be released over the next two months. So why don't you uh, tell our listeners what gems are in store for us? Oh, man. I love <laughs> this part of the show. Almost <laughs> as much as I love giving away fan set stuff. I just, I love talking about what's coming because I, I love fan sets. Um, so first up, on February 1st, so just a, you know, a, a short amount of time from now, it's the USS Enterprise ship pin from Discovery at Warp, no less. It's something we like to call Disco Prize. Disco Prize! <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> and uh, on February 15th, we are very excited to announce the second pin in the Trek's Trek Geeks exclusive line is going to be available. It is the TOS Delta Tricorder pin. Now, this pin is only going to be available at trekgeeks.com slash pins and also over at fansets.com and nowhere else. That's it. No resellers, no other retailers. You can either get it from Fansets or Trek Geeks, and that's it, which is pretty exciting. Now, on March 1st, another Discovery pin is going to be making its debut, and that's going to be Mirror Universe Landry. And we have to say... Sincerely, there is never enough Landry in any universe. Am I right? Oh, you're Am right. I right. You're right. And then, of course, rounding out March will be Tom Paris from Voyager debuting on March fifteenth, Dan. So, just a, a an incredible array of pins coming in the next couple of months, buddy. I love when there's like more than two, and and we got yeah. we got a bunch. I'm very very excited. It's a lot of pins, um, and that doesn't even include the Star Trek Discovery episode pins. That we make that will be making their debut very very soon. Keep your eyes on fansets.com and keep your ears here on Trek Geeks for further details on these beauties. And as a special bonus to Trek Geeks and Discovering Trek listeners, if you want to receive ten percent off your entire order at fansets.com this week, even if you order non Star Trek stuff, which is cool, just enter the keyword New Eden at checkout. All capitals, no spaces. N E W. E D E N. This code is going to be available until midnight on Sunday, February 4th. So don't delay. Well, and actually Sunday is February 3rd. Right. So let's Super be sure Bowl. we get the right Super Bowl Sunday, but <laughs> Sunday, February 3rd at midnight is when the code expires. Fansets is pinpoint accuracy. And we thank our friends at Fansets for sponsoring this week's episode. So Dan, mm. going back to our discussion, as I open the right thing. More complex <laughs> than brown. Sorry. So, it, it, no, it's okay. In listening to our outtake special last couple of weeks, you know, you do that bit at least a dozen times. Did you realize that? <laughs> I love, Ruck may be one of my favorite TOS characters ever. I I'd, love him. I'd forgotten you do it that often. But anyway, <laughs> speaking of fan sets, so you mentioned that the second in the line of, or I mentioned that the second in the line of, of Trek Geek exclusive pins are out. The first of those exclusive pins. The TOS Delta communicator is available right now mm -hmm. at trekgeeks.com slash pins. And it is the only place you can get this pin. So go to trekgeeks.com, click on the giant photo at the top of the page of that pin, and you can order that for yourselves and, and it'll come right to your door. Dan will ship it right out using his grubby little paws. What? And, uh, I know it's only $6.95 plus shipping, which is a fantastic price. And, um, it's just such a beautiful pin. We've had such a great response, Dan. I, uh, I can't believe we, you know, these things are going amazingly fast. They are going fast. They are great. And there's a handsome looking gent on that page that you can click on. Also, if you want to order the pin, I'm just going to throw that out there. Uh, check it out at trekgeeks.com slash pins. I'm wearing mine right now, actually. Um, above my Trek Geeks uh, logo on my shirt that I wore today. Um, I've gotten several comments about it um, just at, at stores. Um, a couple of our listeners have talked about how they have had people ask about it. Um, it's definitely something you want to add to your collection. I love it. But even even bigger news is what we just talked about um, with the Fansets uh, sponsor uh, or spot is pin number two is coming out very, very soon, buddy. It really is available February 15th. So just in a couple of weeks over at trekgeeks.com slash pins and at fansats.com. It is that TOS Delta tricorder. It's the second in a series. And uh, oh, dude, the, the remaining <laughs> pins of the series are just going to be lights out. But that tricorder pin looks so good. It's uh, I, I, I can't wait for us to get them in our hot little hands um, because the communicator pin is amazing. The tricorder is going to look awesome, and you know what's going to come after that at some point. You just uh -oh. you know. 
Oh, we have some pretty good ideas of what's going to be coming down for this series. And every single one gets better than the last, if that's even possible. Um, we can't wait to share all the things as, as, they, as they're released. We're very honored and excited to be um, involved in this uh, pin collection from Fansets. We are. So let's talk about some other Trek Geeks news. So yeah, this, one isn't, this one isn't on the outline, but I'm going to toss this one at you and we'll talk Ooh. about it. Okay. The first of which is, is we are officially announcing the formation of the Trek Geeks network of podcasts. Yes. Um, so uh, we used to call ourselves your independent Star Trek podcast because we were not part of a network. But we are forming our own network now and we're just going to call it Trek Geeks because the, the name's kind of got a ring to it. I like, I like, could it be the independent podcast network? No, because that really is kind of an oxymoron. <laughs> well, look who you're talking to. But uh, yeah. no, this, <laughs> this has been something that, uh, um, that you have been and playing with the idea with for a while. And we've had discussions and it's a, a very, very positive thing and a very exciting thing, um, for us and, and people, uh, um, that, enjoy listening to us we're thrilled about the ideas that we have for this network and what we have um, um discussed it, it it's it's a little scary but at the same time I, i'm just i'm just on cloud nine man it's it's going to be a fun fun ride well one of the things we talked about is we wanted to do content that was more than just a couple of people sitting down and talking about an episode of star trek mm -hmm. um because we figured we got that pretty well covered between trek geeks and discovering trek um, but we wanted to branch out. There are other areas of fandom which are just as neat to talk about and just as exciting. And while certainly we're going to add other podcasts, we don't necessarily want them all to be the same format. We want there right. to be some variety. We want there to, you know, to be some some difference so that the shows are, are unique in some way. And and one of the first things we're doing is um is something pretty exciting. We're calling it Trek Geeks Game Night, and it's going to be hosted by our our dear friend Dan Garcia, who's one of our admins over at Camp Kittimer, our official Facebook group. And it will essentially be the uh, the live streaming of gameplay for Star Trek Adventures, which is the role-playing game that is essentially Dungeons & Dragons for Star Trek. Right. Um, Dan is going through the process now of assembling a crew and this will be something that uh, will wind up being on video and that will also be distributed probably via our YouTube channel and also our Facebook. And um, it's going to be neat because it's such a great extension of fandom and it, it's an amazing amount of fun. There's some great Star Trek here and some great stories as part of these games. And we figured, well, you know, why not get some people together to talk about it as they play and we'll make that content exciting and, and put it out there for people to consume. It's really amazing. Dan's already come up with some great ideas for stories for this Trek Geeks game night. We've heard a couple of ideas and we really love them. We're really looking forward to seeing where this goes. One of the things that I find so interesting about this is back when I was a kid and I played Dungeons and Dragons, if you can believe it, I did play Dungeons and Dragons, is we would have a group of people sitting around a table with the dice and and writing notes and and maps and and D and D books and so far. The world we live in today allows this to be taking place with people from all over the world through the internet and through the YouTube video feed. That is so exciting to me that we're going to have people from everywhere playing this. Um, I can't wait to see how it all comes out. It's really cool. We're, I'm getting involved in, in new technologies as, as we prepare this stuff. Um, I know that there's going to be um, – Discord is going to be using that something brand new to me, and it's really cool. I really got to – tip my hat to to dan garcia for for what he's going to be doing with this i really think it's going to be a, a fun and positive um night when trek geeks game night takes place we're looking forward to it we're right now targeting march for the the very first we're calling it kind of game zero mm. um sort of like a you know a, a pre-launch kind of like a shakedown cruise for a starship there you go and uh, it's something we're very excited about. And then there's a couple other shows that we really don't have a whole lot of detail on, but they absolutely will be part of the Trek Geeks network. Um, the first of which is we announced when the new Section 31 show was announced that mm -hmm. we were going to add a podcast called Section 31. That is the name yes. of the show. Mm -hmm. um, and because you have the right of first refusal on anything Section 31 related, I'm <laughs> guessing it's going to be hosted by Dan Davidson. <laughs> Probably going to happen. Uh, of course, um, uh, logistics and scheduling has to all be taken care of. Now, of course, we do two podcasts now, so doing a third at the same time might be a little um, 
um, uh, a tough um, with, you know, wanting to stay married uh, for just an example I'm going to throw out there. Um, so hopefully it'll be something that, you know, discovery will be on and then it'll be in its hiatus and then section 31 can pick up, or there may be other things of how they're going to do it. I don't know, but oh yeah, sec- that's going to be my baby. I'm going to love it. I'm going to first write a refusal, first write of approval. It's all going through this guy right here because I am <laughs> Luther Sloan's number two. <laughs> Number yeah, one. you might want to find a different way to phrase that. <laughs> um, it, well, you know, the, the theory is that Star Trek is, is the, the, well, they want Star Trek on pretty much year round. So I doubt right. it's going to overlap with anything. Awesome. Um, so, yeah, Section 31 is coming. Then eventually, when the unnamed Picard series drops, there will be a Picard show on the Trek Geeks Network. Um, we don't really have details to announce of what that's going to look like, but it's going to be a little different than your average podcast. And it's not going to be hosted by us. And um, when we make that announcement, of course, we'll let everybody know. But um, we uh, we have some exciting stuff planned for that. And I think it's going to be pretty cool, man. And b- believe me, everybody will be very happy, I think, um, regardless of, of what the format is. Just being able to talk about a new show with Sir Patrick Stewart as Captain Picard. Um, these are good times, man. I'm very excited about stuff like this. It's great. Me too, man. It's pretty amazing. Um, now, in other Trek Geeks news, um, by the time people hear this, um, our Patreon, which we are launching uh, on Friday, January 25th, will have launched. And we're doing this in part because, well, <laughs> we <laughs> want to do some different kinds of content. We want to expand the Trek Geeks network and we want to do the kinds of things that maybe some other podcast networks don't do. And that's not an indictment of them. We just want to explore fandom a little differently. And we think that's great. It just adds to the fabric of Star Trek discussion. So uh, our Patreon is located at patreon.com slash Trek Geeks. And Dan, um, we got some perks going on there. We do have some perks. One thing I wanted to, to, um, kind of like discuss what you just brought up. We started Trek Geeks to do things a little bit differently than what other Star Trek podcasts are like. We wanted to talk about Star Trek through the veil of our friendship. And when we were discussing this Patreon, we wanted to do something similar. We wanted it to be a little bit different than the norm, which is why we decided to go the way we did. So, um, yeah, there's some great perks that are going to be involved. Um, you're going to get early access to unedited Trek Geeks podcasts. Whether that's a good or a bad thing, <laughs> I'm really not sure yet, but we're going to put it out there for you. Um, that's going to be interesting um, because Bill's kind of a potty mouth. <laughs> wow. <just> Me? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just kidding. No. Um, lots of good stuff. Now, one of the things that we're most excited about when we're talking about these perks is something that we don't think anybody has done or we know nobody's done because we know that. One of the tiers in this Patreon is you will get an annual supporter pin from fan sets that will be specific to the Trek Geeks podcast network, Trek Geeks, Discovering Trek. It's going to be only available through this Patreon, through the specific level. And the other good thing, Bill, is we're going to have a different annual pin every year that we're doing this Patreon. We are. So I, I this is an idea that I kind of had. It's like, well, what would make our Patreon a little different? Plenty of other Patreons do pins of some kind. None of them do pins through fan sets. And so our mm-hmm. first call was to to Lou and John to say, look, is this something you'd, you'd want to help us do? And they said, absolutely. They jumped at the chance. So I sent them the design for the pin and uh, they made it happen. And oh. it, it looks fantastic. It uses the Coconut Media Works logo, which is the coconut being sort of, you know, with a, a rocket ship flying by. And on the pin is, you know, it says year one, 2019. So there'd be a different pin every single year, a different design. And um, it's it's that amazing fan set's quality. I believe it's a two inch pin. So it's, it's sizable mm-hmm. and um, it's going to look gorgeous, man. It really is. It is going to look gorgeous. Uh, you did a great job with the design of that pin. It really looks nice. The, that Coconut Media Works logo is fantastic. I'm... I, I'm going to get one, whether you want me to or not. I can tell no, you that not. right now. Yeah, I am going to have one. Um, no, one a couple, <laughs> another great um, a perk that's going to be available is a, a Podfleet T 
T-shirt. Now, Bill has introduced Trek Geeks um, for quite a while now, coming to you from Podfleet Command. So he went and designed a T-shirt specific for this Patreon. And again, it's unique. It's really, really nice. I love it. It makes me think of um, the motion picture a little bit. I think I mentioned that to you the other day, Bill. Yeah. That is also going to be a great perk that's going to be available for uh, people that uh, donate at specific levels. Um, other things that are going to be available, uh, which is very, very cool. I'm sure we've had a lot of people ask about this for a long time, is you can be a guest on Trek Geeks and Discovering Trek as a specific tier. That is Awesome. We can't wait to welcome people um, to talk Star Trek with us. That's going to be a very, very fun aspect of this Patreon. And finally, you can also be a producer and get producer credit on Trek Geeks and Discovering Trek. There's all kinds of cool things with this Patreon. I'm very excited, and uh, I can't wait to see what happens. Dan, we actually have an associate producer and a producer to thank already. The Patreon wasn't even live. (laughs) We've already got two subscribers. So we want to thank them genuinely. Our associate producer for this episode is Shane Murray and our producer for Trek Geeks episode 166 is Casey Shafsky, our dear friend. Uh, We thank you guys both so much um, uh, for your support and and for always believing in Trek Geeks. We we genuinely appreciate what you guys are doing for us. Um, And you too can be a producer or an associate producer just by going to patreon.com slash Trek Geeks. We also are going to do some other patreon exclusive content uh dan and i spend time in the car together so we're gonna have some conversations in the car and put that that video out there on patreon as well as some other things like patreon hangouts and uh getting our uh, patrons together plus there's a special discord channel just for our patrons where you can get direct access to us so that's patreon.com slash trek geeks Dan, one of the things we love to talk about here on Trek Geeks is Eagle Moss and the official Star Trek Starships collection, only available through them and, of course, officially authorized by CBS Studios. You know, we look at these ships, and this really truly is the ultimate collection of vessels from all across the Star Trek universe. You you got the original series and Next Gen and DS9 and Voyager and Enterprise, including all of the films all the way up through Star Trek Beyond. It's just such... an amazing array of little ships. I love it. Now, each of these models, of course, is made from die-cast metal and high-quality ABS materials. And then, of course, they are hand-painted with reference to the actual CG models used in production and where they exist, photos from the original studio models in some cases. Yeah, and in addition to these beautiful ships, they come with a very sturdy and beautiful display base, plus a collector's magazine featuring behind-the-scenes info, original design sketches, breakdown of technologies used on board, all kinds of good stuff. Subscribe to the collection today to receive your first ship, the USS Enterprise NCC 1701D for only $4.95 with free shipping. Additional models will then ship twice monthly and they're delivered directly to your door, which is very, very cool. Now, as a subscriber, you're also entitled to free gifts worth over $90. You can cancel your subscription at any time. And for full details, head right on over to st-starships.com slash Trek Geeks. Now, Bill, I'm going to do something we haven't done before. Right here live, I'm going to get some live reaction for you because I was over at shop.eaglemoss.com last week and I ordered some ships and they arrived about an hour before we started recording today. So I'm going to show no you way. these beauties Yeah, and I'm going to get your reaction live here as we're doing the spot. First one up. You got this beautiful NX01 ISS Enterprise from the Mirror Universe. And it looks so cool. I love the yellow highlights on it. The highlights are fantastic. The painting on these things are great. I absolutely love that one. Now, this next one was actually, I think they did this one from the remastered TOS uh, episode Arena. It is the Gorn Starship. And it's very cool. It's got four nacelles. It's really, really nice. It's got some purple in it. Very, very cool. I love that. That's going in the office tomorrow as well. And speaking of TOS, uh, there are two versions of this ship available, one from TOS and one from Enterprise. And that is a Tholian starship right there. Beautiful web emitter on the back. Laskeen, I can just see him looking right through that <laughs> finder right there. It's very, very cool. But the creme de la creme, I saw this and I had to laugh out loud. It is absolutely great. And we actually talked about this episode not too long ago, Bride of Chaotica. This is Captain Proton's ship 
from that episode. It's gray, kind of like the black and white of the episode itself. The yeah. detail is awesome. Eagle Moss, we love you guys. They are These are beautiful. I cannot wait to set them up in my cube at work tomorrow, man. And I just have to show them to you here on the show. I can't wait to see the stand that Captain Proton's rocket ship comes in because that's got to be really cool. Um, and, and I can testify that you actually did show me these things on video and they are they are fantastic just as you held them up. Now, of course, once again, for fans who want to purchase their favorite ships individually, you can do so for just a few dollars more. Um, you can head on over to shop.eaglemoss.com or, of course, swing by your local comic book shop. Always good to support local business. And, of course, sincere thanks to Eagle Moss and the official Star Trek Starships collection for sponsoring this week's episode. Dan, moving on, a little bit more news here. It appears, although we, there's some late breaking news here uh, as we talk about this, mm-hmm. that uh, the fourth movie in the Kelvin timeline is shelved, or at least the one helmed by director S.J. Clarkson. Yes, um, not all good news in the Star Trek universe, I guess, from time to time. Last year, late last year, I guess it was November-ish maybe, um, we heard that uh, Chris Pine and Chris Hemsworth had walked away um, from the project over differences with what they felt they should get paid, which was a little aggravating to me because it was my understanding that they had a set amount that they were going to get paid for these movies. But now that they're both gigantic stars in the superhero world, like with Wonder Woman and Thor, of course, they wanted more money. Paramount, I guess, said no. So there was some um, disagreement and they walked away from the project. So that kind of put things in jeopardy. Came out very recently that Director S.J. Clarkson, who had been pegged to be the director of this film and would have been the first female director for a Star Trek film, has departed the project to be a um, producer on the new Game of Thrones prequel that is in the works over on HBO. So um, kind of not sure what's going to be happening with the movie. Uh, you said there's some late breaking news that I'm not aware of. So this is going to be brand new to me as well. Well, first, let's step back for a second. So Pine yeah. and Hemsworth, they didn't want more money. They wanted the money that was contractually promised to them that Paramount agreed on. Because after the return from Star Trek Beyond, uh, Paramount realized they didn't do as well as they thought and they wanted to pay them less, as I understand. I misunderstood that story then. Okay, thank so, you. So yeah, they're not looking for more money. They're gotcha. looking for the money they were told they were going to get. That uh, makes sense. <laughs> so just this evening, Trek, uh, sorry, trekmovie.com has an article up. Uh, Paramount president talks up Tarantino Star Trek plus Viacom CBS merger buzz returns. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So apparently a, a feature in the New York Times about and this is quoting directly from the article on Trek movie. In a feature in the New York Times about Paramount Pictures' efforts to turn around the studio, the subject of Star Trek came up as part of the studio's future plans. The following excerpt from the article recounts the discussion with Paramount Motion Picture Group President Wick Godfrey, who joined the studio in 2017. They talk about a series of movies and uh, various franchises they want to you know, bring back, and Star Trek is one of them. Um, uh, they're talking about still the Quentin Tarantino, and Godfrey says, you know, you talk about... You know, Star Trek and Tarantino and people's eyes light up and apparently the person he was talking to in the room had that very same reaction. So it seems to be something that Paramount is still absolutely uh, interested in doing. Carl Urban described the pitch for that movie as bananas, which is a direct quote, <laughs> um, which I, I assume is good. But it appears that Paramount is willing to move on with Star Trek as a film franchise, regardless of whether it's with or without Bad Robot. That's interesting. I'm not really sure how to digest that just yet. Um, We've talked in the past about how we felt about a Tarantino project. Um, And with what's been going on with Pine, Hemsworth, S.J. Clarkson, and now hearing this, I don't know. I don't know what my first initial, my my initial thought is one nod of happiness. Um, But I've got to think about it a little bit more and read the article from uh, start to finish. But the the, the bananas line is, is quite interesting. I will say that. It really is. I mean, uh, I honestly don't know if there's going to be another movie with this cast or in the Kelvin timeline. If they decide to, to go a different direction and recast and reboot again, I'm okay with it. Obviously, I just I want Star Trek on in movies to continue in some form, but I'm happy because I have Star Trek back on television in a big way. That's what I was going to say. And, and uh, if it happens, great. If it doesn't happen, I'm not going to be as devastated as I've initially may have been because in my personal opinion, man, and we've talked about this, 
what we're seeing with discovery is cinematic. It is, it, it could be on the big screen and we get to watch it in our living rooms. It's the, you know, the special effects and the storyline and, and the grand scope of what we're seeing right now. It's cinematic tele it's cinematic television. So it makes me a little less devastated if the movie stopped. I'd like I'm to okay. see it, but if we don't, I'm in the same mind. I mean, if there's a break from the movies for a while, I don't think that's the worst thing. Yeah. Um, yeah everybody's talking about, well, actually right now, nobody's talking about Star Trek movies because um, yeah. there are five series in production in some form or, or another. Hello. Right. <laughs> um, so, well, and this, who knows what happens if CBS and Paramount decide to remerge, which is rumored to happen this year in that article on, uh, on trekmovie.com. So uh, time will tell. And Dan, lastly, in, in catching up on things, Alex Kurtzman had a lot to say while we were gone. Um, I think it's safe to say that, you know, love him or, or hate him. Alex Kurtzman is, is breathing a lot of new life into Star Trek in one form or another. Um, people may like or dislike some of his outings, but it's safe to say that his goal is to draw in a new generation of fans. And I think that that is what's key. Absolutely. I mean, he was he got a contract extension late last year for the specific purpose of bringing new Trek content. And he certainly isn't sitting on his butt just letting things happen. He is full speed ahead with all kinds of projects. You mentioned them at the very beginning, all the different things that we have going on. Of course, the um, second Star Trek animated series he mentioned uh, recently in an article, there's no title. The only thing that he said about it is it's going to be more kid-friendly. Um, of course, the first animated series, Lower Decks, is already in the works. Uh, we haven't seen anything about that yet, but uh, we know that that's coming. Um, I found it very interesting that with the popularity of Short Treks, he did mention that um, they will be coming back and the interesting thing I thought about that was that the short treks that we see next time are going to be animated short treks. That's a very curious statement, I think. It kind of reminds me of uh, the Matrix shorts that were animated. They put out a whole disc of them that, that I thought were interesting f for very, very uh, different anima animation styles. But um, yeah, I, of course, that doesn't mean there won't be other live action short treks at some point. I think they're, sure. they're almost kind of have to be, but I'm willing to bet that these animated ones are kind of a teaser for what's to come with maybe the second animated series. Again, all mm -hmm. speculation. Um, a lot of people have gotten on Kurtzman for the, the whole kid friendly aspect. Um, and to summarize, he thinks that star Wars has always done better in inspiring and, and attracting a youthful audience. And some have taken that to mean, well, Star Trek doesn't inspire kids. And that's not at all what he said. No. He just said that, you know, the characters on Star Trek are more fully formed. They're adults. They have adult conversations. Where Star Trek, in all honesty, between you and me and the audience, is pretty much kind of matinee fare that's designed to appeal to kids. Mm -hmm. So I think that what he wants to do is to to create more entry points for younger brains into the franchise. And I, uh, you and I both found the franchise as kids because right. of older people in our lives. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think that I don't think this is a horrible thing. I think that the fan base has to uh, has to have some youth and vitality in order to go forward you know, into year 100 at some point. We've spoken to dozens and dozens, probably hundreds of people, especially at STLV, who came into Star Trek in their adult years. But we've talked to countless people who started watching TNG when they were kids. My nephew started watching TNG when he was barely able to, to walk. I mean, I think Trek has always been very welcoming to a young audience. And I think what Kurtzman is doing is paving the way to make sure that that continues for as far down as the road, far down the road as we can see. And I think that's a very good thing. I think so too. I mean, obviously CBS wants Star Trek to succeed. Obviously CBS wants, you know, there to be more than just the five series that came before, if they're going to, you know, invest in this franchise and put it all over CBS all access, that means there have to be new versions of Trek and, and ones that fit today's viewing style. And I think that that's an okay thing. I'm not the biggest Alex Kurtzman fan in the world. Um, I have my problems with him. I have my problems with some of the things he does in relation to Star Trek, 
But as a Star Trek fan, I have to keep an open mind for the content that's coming because at the end of the day, it's more than just Alex Kurtzman that creates these things, just right. as it's more than Gene Roddenberry that created the original series. You have mm-hmm. the DC Fontanas, you have the Gene Coons, you have the David Geralds, and you know all of the other people who were involved in, in taking his creation and turning it into something we love. And uh, take, well, take the new Section 31 show as an example. You know, there are two amazing writers who are going to be heading that show up, despite the fact that Alex Kurtzman's company is, is, you know, really producing it. I'm still excited because I know there's going to be great stories there. And that's at at the end of the day, that's what I want. You you know, somebody said something, I I saw something on, on social media today that sometimes this, this particular person, and it wasn't anybody I knew, it was just something I saw on social media, sometimes wants to punch Star Trek fans in the face. And that's because yeah. we have so much to look forward to. We have so much coming down the road. And as a Star Trek fan, how can you not be anything but excited for what, where we are right now? The world we live in today, I talk about it on shows all the time. The technology we have today, it makes it great to be living in the world today. As Star Trek fans, we should be ecstatic because we've never had this much going on at one time as we're seeing right now. And it baffles me that people are not as 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 happy about it as as we are, and so many of our friends and and Camp Kittimer people and other fans. There's always that little black cloud floating off in the distance, trying to make things not as exciting as they should be. And to me, that's sad. No, I have to agree with you. I mean, we've all all any of us have ever wanted since 2005 was more Star Trek. Mm-hmm. And now we're getting it and we're getting it, you know, like it's, it's being handed out like Kool-Aid on a hot day. And <laughs> it really is. Oh, you want a show? Here you go. You get a show and you get a show. It's like Oprah. I want um, a show. <laughs> all right. You get a show. Everybody <laughs> gets a show. Um, and okay. So it may not be some people's vision of what Star Trek is. Well, you know, last I knew, um, we're fans. We don't get to decide what the vision is. Exactly. At the core of all of these stories is something that is just so uh, amazingly Star Trek, even Star Trek discovery, which the gatekeepers, you know, say it's just an abomination. I'm sorry. Um, there's Star Trek there. And if they listen to discovering Trek, maybe they would know. Mm. <laughs> nice. Thank you. I know. That's Thank nice. you. Nice. Very nice. <laughs> well, Dan, speaking of very nice, um, we do have to say that it's very nice to be back in the saddle. It's also very nice to hear the music of five year mission in our ear holes now again, always we love those guys. They are amazing. We're so grateful to them for all the music they let us use in Trek geeks and on the Trek geeks network of podcasts. God, that's got a wow. great ring to it. That's I beautiful. know we want everyone to head on over to five year mission.net, download all their albums, become huge fans. And you'll then you'll know the songs that we use as, as bumpers and as themes and all that stuff. But uh five year mission.net Dan. It's it's great. I was going to start singing, but I don't want another cease and desist order thrown at me. Because no, you know, you one every four years is is all we want. So, well, actually, we could start over. No, no, no we can't. You know, no. I was very confused the other day, though. I got to say, Bill, I was watching <laughs> just the other day. <laughs> I was watching Wolf in the Fold, and God, that guy looked familiar, didn't he? I could have sworn we saw him in Return of the Farcons as Landrew. I wasn't one hundred percent sure. How did he end up? How did he end up on Argelius, where the law is love? It, it, I was confused. Now, normally, Prefarc Jarus is a quiet and understandable man, but when someone criticizes that drumming ability, oh, he gets all riled up. No, no, kill you all, die, make you suffer. It's like, dude, calm down. It's, it's okay, Prefarc Jarus. It's, it's all going to be fine. You're making me suffer right now. Welcome back. Uh... Uh, I figured you were trying to make up for an entire vacation's worth of Farkisms. <laughs> yeah. That's good yeah, stuff. <laughs> yeah. So that's fiveyearmission.net. Please be sure to download all of their songs. Dan, as we mentioned before, I want to thank our, our associate producer, Shane Murray, and our producer, Casey Shafsky, uh, two of our supporters in our Patreon campaign. Uh, we're so grateful to them for all their support, and we hope you too will become a supporter at patreon.com slash trekgeeks. Now, Dan, next week... We're going to have a special crossover event with some good friends, aren't we? Yeah, we are. We're excited about this, Bill. Next week, we're going to be having a two-part conversation with our good friends from Standard Orbit. And that's 
uh, Haley Stoddart, Zach Moore, and Ken Tripp. Now, part one is going to be over on their show, and we're going to talk about godlike beings in TOS. And then the very next day on our show, Trek Geeks, they're going to join us to discuss religion on Deep Space Nine. Prophets and par wraiths, the founders, the divine treasury, it's all fair game, and it's all next week on Trek Geeks, the flagship podcast of the Trek Geeks Network. God, that sounds, sounds good. That sounds like somebody great. just wrote that. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> so, uh, so for those of you uh, who down who get Trek Eats automatically in your feed, we are going to put the standard orbit fee uh, episode in our feed directly. So you won't have to go anywhere to get it. You will get it uh, automatically. You're going to say, "Why am I getting a standard orbit episode as part of my Trek Geeks feed?" That's why, because it's part one of the discussion we're going to have with Haley and Ken and Zach. So, and then the following day, you'll get Trek Geeks as you normally would. So that's pretty exciting. That's- uh, that's all next week here on the flagship uh, Dan of course for more great Star Trek discussion we want everyone to head out over to the Tricorder Transmissions here online at the thetricordertransmissions.com and of course for all the news on all the Star Trek CO please check out our great friends at treknews.net for now this has been episode 166 of the Trek Geeks podcast we do hope you all live long and prosper so we got five what five shows section 31 coconut Jean-Luc Picard coconut animated lower decks coconut some other coconut show that we don't know is going to be kid friendly you want me to stop now i I didn't want you to stop four years ago ouch (laughs) music for trek geeks is provided by five-year mission they're writing one song for each episode of the original series download their music at fiveyearmission.net trek geeks a star trek podcast is a production of Coconut Media Works, executive producer, Bill Smith. For even more Star Trek discussion, check out Discovering Trek, a Star Trek Discovery Companion, available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and discoveringtrek.com. Bing bong! Bing bong! What is this, an echo? I don't know, it sounds like an echo. I hate you. Just stop wow. it. You just not even. You get a you get a month away from the Trek Geeks microphone, and you were just. I can't deal with you. <laughs> it's been longer than like, a month, hasn't it? Um, it seems a like little it's been bit. A year. Christmas Eve was a month ago. So, wow. I know. Um, That's amazing. January is almost gone. The Super Bowl is not this oh, weekend, but the weekend oh, after. Oh. <laughs> okay, so hmm? let me throw this out at you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm getting nervous already. We've been doing Trek Geeks now for, we just had our fourth birthday. Happy birthday to us. Happy birthday to you too, man. Uh, and for, us. Yeah. Thank you. The Patriots have been in the Super Bowl for three <laughs> of the Februarys we've been doing Trek Geeks. Right. And the one before we started. So that's pretty good. Yeah. Like, we've only missed one year. <laughs> yeah. And so we don't want to do too much sports ball because we know that not everybody's a sports ball person. But um, if this is a trend that continues, I'm okay with it. I'm very okay with it. But I do have to say that uh once this 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 ride uh, exits once we exit this ride of the best uh, football dynasty ever it's going to be a good 10 years of absolute cleveland browns <laughs> that's kind of like when i sit down and record with you every week man i've known you for almost 25 years and it's like 25 years of browns it really is you still there uh, I, unfortunately, <laughs> that was, I didn't even have anything good to say to that because it was so funny. <laughs> uh, right? I know. I just, I really cracked myself up. Yeah. I'm glad you do. I think you're pretty stupid. I, wow. See, you're very vicious and mean tonight. Not, not at all. If, yeah, if you I, are, if you'd be beeping, bleeping me out left and right if I was mad, but I'm not. Because I know, I just look at you, and and God, I have to look at you. But and and I I hear what you're saying, and I know where it's coming from, and I can't help but feel pity. So I just laugh it off. <laughs> uh, talk about something, because I need to add something to the outline. So all right, well, I'm just going to sit here and talk about something because um, uh, you, you just I, I don't even know what to do with you anymore. Um, we we have to commute together again pretty soon because we haven't commuted probably in the month that we've been off from Trek Geeks which is uh, probably why I'm in such a good mood, uh, honestly. Um, is this really the best you can do? Because you're terrible at this. No, I, I, I'm, I'm speaking from the heart, man. You know, I got faith in the heart. Um, Going where your heart will take you? <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. It's, I got a question. taking me straight to hell in a handbasket, yeah. I, I got a question about the Enterprise uh, opening. There is a ship that they show 
in Enterprise, and it's the back of the ship, so you're seeing the engines as it goes away from the TV screen. I have no idea what ship that is. I've never seen it, and I can't find it anywhere. I'm going to have to look on Eagle Moss to see if they have it. You, uh, I'm sure there has to be a breakdown of that sequence on like uh, Memory Alpha or something. Maybe the internet has something. I'll have to check that. Plus, it's not like you don't know people who have actually worked on Star Trek that might be able to answer that question for you. Oh, oh no, I could always ask Morehouse. After all, he did fire the phasers. Yeah, but all <laughs> he did was fire the phasers. It's like he had one job, and didn't he miss? Uh, probably. He's probably drunk. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you mean like you right now? <laughs> yeah. Hint Blackberry tonight, baby. That's what I'm going with. Hint Blackberry. I I didn't with know a shot that, of absolute. I'm just I didn't know that Tito's homemade vodka actually made blackberry. That's amazing. Oh, please. I'm not going Tito's. Are you serious? Kettle one. Kettle um, one in this house. Have you ever had moonshine? No. I had some recently. Um, apple pie moonshine. And I tell you what, it literally was just like drinking a slice of apple pie. It was uh, just amazingly delicious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, sorry, that, that's that's not Spotify because that's just a commercial for uh, uh, Magically Delicious. Was that Lucky Charms, I think it was? I don't know. It was. It was. Thank you for paying attention. I mean, you're humming <laughs> along while I'm telling a story and telling you about something really cool. And... I, I'm, I'm just adding to it. I'm listening. I get the whole shebang going here. Go ahead. <laughs> really? Continue. Really. Yeah. Uh, why, why do I bother continuing at this point? <laughs> I mean, you know... It's really good to be back in the chair, you know? It is. We it's... got to record Discovering Trek last weekend for the first time in a long yes. time. Yeah. We're doing this. It's good to be uh, It's good to be back where we belong, buddy. I like it, and I really love the idea of what we're talking about tonight. It was a great idea that you came up with, man. I, well, you know, I figured we've missed a lot when we've been away. <laughs> yeah. We have. There's been a lot. Just, just a little bit of news. Teeny yeah. tiny. You remember when we started? The, like There was never news. <laughs> there was never news. No, there never was. There never was. But on a serious note, um, four years, it's been an amazing ride so far, buddy. And I can't imagine doing it with anybody else, nor would I want to. Absolutely. The same. You are the best. Uh, This was this was your brainchild. It has blossomed into something that I am so proud of being a part of. And uh, like you said, I would not do it with anybody else. It's just it's been fantastic. You ready to do this? I'm ready to do this. Year five, here we go. Coconut! 